The number of measles cases linked to the Disneyland theme park continues to grow. Doctors weigh in and sound the alarm. Vaccines are one of the greatest achievements in the history of public health. We thought we had measles essentially licked. So why is this disease coming back from the brink of extinction? People are deciding they're afraid of vaccines. And that fear is putting the nation's health at risk. How did we get to this point where personal belief is more powerful than science? They get this monster shot. You ever see the size of it? It's terrible. We vaccinated our baby and something happened. When someone's already sucked into that myth, it's a very difficult thing to talk them out of it. Medical news in history. Dr. Jonas Salk discovers a vaccine that promises to wipe out childhood's crippling and killing enemy, polio. In the 1950s, the Salk vaccine was greeted with open arms. Civic clubs had immunization parties. Polio, smallpox, diphtheria, no longer a threat in the U.S. because of vaccines. And in 2000, another watershed moment. The CDC reports the measles practically wiped out tonight in the United States. But that report proved overly optimistic. Measles are back. More than 600 cases were reported in the U.S. in 2014. And another disease that looked like it was disappearing a generation ago is also making a comeback, whooping cough. Unlike measles, its return is in part attributed to the waning effectiveness of its vaccine. But it shows how the spread of a disease can impact the most vulnerable. The risk of whooping cough may sound like something from the past, but it's still very real. Today, California reported more than 4,200 cases. Nine people have died, all of them infants. For San Francisco mother, Mariah Bianchi, those numbers are more than just statistics. When her son was born in August 2005, as a nurse, she realized something was wrong. It was just like he was so lethargic. And I knew that there was just something. I'm like, I can't keep him awake. He went to the doctor. And she said, I want you to go to the hospital. As soon as he got there, he went into cardiac arrest. What she didn't realize was that the immunity from her own whooping cough vaccine had worn off. And she'd infected her newborn, who was too young to be inoculated and they started CPR right away for probably about 45 minutes or so. As a nurse, I'm thinking, I know what that means. Your brain is not getting oxygen. <laughs> Your body is failing. And um, the surgeon came out and he said his chance of survival is very low. We made the most compassionate decision you could, but we just said, no, don't, don't do it, just stop. Dylan Bianchi died 17 days after he was born. Vulnerable people, like newborns, depend on the immunity of those around them to protect them from dangerous diseases. To keep measles from spreading, for example, about 94% of a community needs to be vaccinated. It's called herd immunity. In some areas, that's a concern. Here in Marin County, California, you have pockets of people who uh, are not vaccinating their children. There are certain schools and communities where that rate is as high as 50%. And what I fear is that we have an epidemic of measles, an outbreak, and that we have children that are very ill or that die. The measles vaccine has been so effective, it doesn't seem like something we need to protect our children from. You have this sort of fundamental paradox of vaccines that they've become a victim of their own success. Seth Mnookin examines the fear of vaccines in his book, The Panic Virus. The current vaccine scares and controversies that we're still dealing with today stem from a 1998 paper that appeared in The Lancet, a very respected medical journal published out of the UK. The paper, written by Dr. Andrew Wakefield, claimed there might be a connection between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and autism. In his press conference, Andrew Wakefield stood up and said, Parents should not give their children the MMR vaccine, period, until we are able to get to the bottom of this. The MMR vaccination in combination, uh, that I think that it should be suspended in favor of the single vaccines. The notion that you would take a 12-person case study and make claims about a population as a whole is ridiculous. This paper was historically bad. 
And what the media in, in the UK did was they ran with that. It's a dilemma. You know, that's a sensational story. Follow-up studies of hundreds of thousands of children could not find any evidence that the MMR vaccine causes autism. And investigations into Wakefield's original paper revealed he distorted the data and acted unethically. He's lost his medical license. The Lancet paper has been retracted. But he had very effectively positioned himself as a martyr. And in some odd way, every piece of evidence that comes out against Wakefield sort of solidifies his standing in the community that still pays attention to him. Another reason fears about vaccine safety persisted is that complicated science proved difficult for public health institutions to communicate. Case in point, their response when concerns were raised over a vaccine preservative called thimerosal, which contains ethyl mercury. Children are getting mercury injected into their bodies with vaccines. That's right, mercury, a known neurotoxin. But ethyl mercury in thimerosal is not the same as the toxic methyl mercury, which is found in fish and accumulates in the body. Nevertheless, the Public Health Service and the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended thimerosal be removed and their messaging backfired. In 1999, health officials denied a link between vaccines and the autism epidemic, yet urged vaccine makers to take out the mercury just to be safe. What the American Academy of Pediatrics said is, we are recommending this step so we can make safe vaccines even safer. As a parent, if you tell me something's safe, I don't think that's on a sliding scale. I assume that if you say it's safe, it is safe for my child. It's not safe, safer, safest. There are almost two languages here. There's the language of science, and then there's English. And in the language of science, you have these signifiers, like to the best of our knowledge, as far as we know. Based on the available scientific uh, uh, evidence. Because you can't say anything with 100%, you can't prove a negative. And so when scientists speak in their language and the rest of us translate that into English, it sounds like they're saying something very different than they're saying. Based on what we know right now, we don't think that there is an association. But that's not saying with 100% certainty there isn't one. That is saying that based on the evidence that we have right now, we don't think that there is one. Either because the reporter doesn't understand what's actually going on, uh, or because they're looking to generate a story, they then take that and make it seem as if the scientist is saying, I think there's a possibility that vaccines do cause autism, when in fact that's not it at all. News organizations should exercise judgment about what goes out over their air. Brendan Nyan is a professor at Dartmouth College who studies how misinformation spreads and the role of the media. What's particularly important is to think about the overall scientific consensus. Where is the weight of the evidence and is our reporting reflecting that or not? That's what's often gone astray in the vaccine debate. It's time for everyone to redirect the questions toward finding the cause of autism. It is not, however, vaccinations. Controversial subject, Nancy. Not controversial subject. Well, but controversial for parents who still it believe. It is not controversial, Matt. It's it, time for kids to get their vaccines. If it weren't everyday people can't be fact-checkers for every story about vaccines. And when journalists don't give people the weight of the scientific evidence, they're letting them down. She got her vaccinations. She ran a low-grade fever. She had a little rash. And then she stopped talking. A false sense of balance was also created when scientific evidence was equated with people's personal experiences. Reporting fell into this, on the one hand, on the other hand, fallacy. Uh, this notion that if you have two sides that are disagreeing, that means that you should present both of them um, with equal weight. We vaccinated our baby and something happened. That's it. Jenny McCarthy has had more to do with popularizing the notion that vaccines are dangerous uh, than any other single person in the United States. We begin, of course, with Jenny McCarthy, the actress and entertainment personality. Her son, Evan, has autism. She's very smart. She's telegenic. Look it. It's plain and simple. It's bullshit. No, it's... Yes, it is. Excuse me. When I look at clips of her, it's a completely unfair fight. My science is named Evan. He's at home. That's my son. Jenny McCarthy has said many times, and oftentimes very loudly, that you know her child is her scientific fact. Any scientist or any 
science reporter who's familiar with how science works would say that no, any one person is an anecdote. Um, and the plural of anecdote is not data. Uh, you know, it's just a story. But stories are powerful. While vaccination rates are high nationwide, there are some religious and ethnic enclaves and communities where well-educated upper middle class people live where vaccine hesitancy runs strong. I was interviewing an epidemiologist and he said, oh yeah, we completely know we're gonna have communities that have issues with vaccine uptake. We take a map and stick a pin wherever there's a Whole Foods and draw a circle around it and that's where we're gonna have problems. Um, he was obviously being facetious, Exasperated health officials are trying to come up with new ways to communicate with the public. Brendan Nyan conducted a study and watched how hesitant parents reacted when they were shown information from the CDC website stating there's no evidence the MMR vaccine causes autism. The good news was it did cause parents to be less likely to believe in the myth that the MMR vaccine causes autism. The bad news is, however, that it made them less likely to say they would vaccinate a child which is precisely the opposite of what we would hope to see. What we found is that telling people the correct information uh, wasn't actually effective. That may mean we've reached the point where public health officials in the media can't even talk about vaccine safety without it backfiring. But fears generated by the latest measles outbreak may help people understand more clearly the value of vaccines and what's at stake. What does it take? How many times do you have to tell people or talk about it? We all have a role in helping each other to protect each other. A vaccine-preventable disease should not have killed my son. <laughs>